fence. I heard the crack in the back. Yeah, and, and left I the room. Seriously. So, so Somehow let, this let's, ties in. It does. It Prohibition. Does. Yes. Uh, well, actually, more, here's what it drinking. is. The more things change, the more they change. No, no. <laughs> That's right. Okay. It's all about drinking. It's we don't even need to transition. Three-part, five-and-a-half-hour series about the rise, rule, and fall of the 18th Amendment. Another Ken Burns great Ken, you talked about this last year. You, yep. you, you're so excited about I've never seen you so excited uh, about anything. The, Why? It, it, it's Ecclesiastes. There's nothing new under the Can't sun. This is the story of single-issue political campaigns, wedge-issue campaigns that metastasize with horrible unintended consequences. Sound familiar? This is about the demonization of recent immigrants to the United States. Sound familiar? This is about the decay of civil discourse in our country and smear campaigns during presidential election cycles. Sound familiar? This is about a whole group of people who feel like they've lost control of their country and want to take it back. And the way they do it is by by imposing prohibition. Nothing so needs reforming, Mark Twain said, as other people's habits. So, this is the story of, of putting prohibition for somebody else. You can control and, and, the immigrants, and, and, and you can control the big the cities. immigrants at the time that were being scapegoated. So, so, as always, America has this dream of itself, a small town, agrarian, Jeffersonian vision that actually never was. But as the big cities are filling at the end of the 19th century, as they're filling up with Catholics, Jews, of newly freed African Americans, what are you going to do? You've already got this concurrent social problem, which is people are awash in alcohol in the 19th century, and the only way you're going to take care of that they think is not by trying to address the problem with the 10% of the population that suffers from drunkenness, alcoholism we call it, but by imposing the solution on 100% of the people. The only amendment to the Constitution of the United States that limits human freedom and the only one, thank God, that shows the process ultimately works that's been repealed. It was episode one of the documentary entitled A Nation of Drunkards. We, we're drinking three or four times as much as we drink now. Uh, it's distilled uh, spirits as well, which you know are relatively new, just a, a couple of centuries old, and people are are drunk everywhere. Families are being broken up. The family paycheck is being squandered. Women who have absolutely no rights, period, full stop, are being abused as our children. There's no recourse in divorce or uh, any protective services. So people very naturally fix on this idea of temperance, drinking less. But then the absolutists come in. Mm -hmm. The moral folks who said, you know, you need to have total abstinence, uh, capital T total abstinence, and that'll be the solution. And as one preacher said to his great credit, uh, very little good has been done by the absolute, absolute shall. Absolute solution. But, but the unintended consequences, organized crime, yep. female alcoholism, we, with stuff we have never escaped the specific gravity of this amendment to, to the prohibition, except for our suspicion, our healthy suspicion of someone who comes to us and said, if you just do this blankety-blank amendment, everything will be all right. Everybody thought that if you got rid of alcohol, Billy Sunday, the evangelist and ex-baseball player, said hell will forever be for rent. Well, you know, as soon as they passed that thing, there was standing room only to get hell into started hell. started filling up. Yeah. They're the absolutists once again. Yep. I want to, before we get problems. to the end, I want to look at a clip. Here's a clip from Prohibition. It was the beginning of the time when boys and girls slept together. There was quite a lot of that going on, which astounded me from my innocent background. But, but anyway, it was happening a lot, really. My girlfriends told me, and, you know, would ask, did I have a really good boyfriend or not? <laughs> but I always denied it. <laughs> and bring up a point, it's fascinating how you said the relevance of the times. Yeah. And you knew you were onto something with Boardwalk <laughs> Empire. The reason we need artists like yourself, and every time right-wing people say, what's with this art, is because it does teach us it's, and it's reminds us. It's right-wing people, and, and, isn't and the, it, Hampton's boy? No, it is. It just, and this is, this no, is not it's just it's reflexive. It's, it is. You're an absolutist. It's the truth. It's, it's, the truth. Absolutist. it's why the left, do left, left leaning people always kind of come down on the arts. This is the right wing. And it's not pontification. There's a reason that you are doing this now. There's a reason that Boardwalk Empire exists. It's in the air. Because it's in the air, it's and the it air. needs to remind yeah. us and, 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 you know, of the our, problems of absolutism. Our fascination. And, you know, we don't point arrows. Well, I'm not a political filmmaker. We, we're just saying this is a great story. When the German are vilified at World War One, which is the final straw that permits us to equate beer with treason, they rename sauerkraut Liberty Cabbage. Oh, I mean, sound fries. familiar? You know, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so the more things change, the more they stay. So what, what was the turning point uh, in, in 
A lot of hypocrisy. Our third episode is called A Nation of Hypocrites. And that's not us imposing it. It's what people said at the time. And when the Depression came and you're going, and why did we eliminate the fifth largest industry? All those teamsters and barrel makers and waiters yeah. and bartenders <laughs> and brewers and distillers and fermenters. Why did we do this? We could tax us. We could put people back to work. But the hypocrisy had already just sunk in. And they said, enough. This is un-American. Wow. Wow. Ken Burns, All thank right. you so oh, much. Great stuff. Prohibition airs on PBS this Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday at 8 o'clock, and it'll be out on DVD next week. This looks fascinating. I can't, I can't wait, wait to see it. I can't wait.